Welcome to Gospel Touch TV. This is DJ Papi. We are hanging out with my man Sam, uh, Sam right. and DTWG. Hey, we, we're going to have a great show tonight. We're going to be talking about Sam's journey in the Lord Amazing. and the new album, of course, Sam. Yeah. Tell us about your journey, man. Tell us where God has taken you, what he has done in your life, and where you are now. You know what, well, God has been so amazing. Me just seeing up here, I'm a testimony. Everybody has a testimony. For well, sure, you know, man. But man, you know, and I'm sure people are watching this right now. Like, oh, it's so you know, once upon a time, I wasn't always like this, you know. Mm -hmm. um, from the age of 10, I gave my life to God. Mm -hmm. And I came to England at the age of 15. Mm -hmm. And when I came here, I was trying to fit in. I was like, you know, I was trying to preach the gospel like I was doing in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, everyone was, people were laughing at me. They were like, where are you from? What so you got saved at the age of 10? As, as little as age of 10. Wow. You know, I had wow. the same passion, more passion that I have for God when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I had more passion when I was younger than so, even now. So you, and then you moved in here when you were a teenager? Yeah, when I was a teenager. What was that like? Um, you know, the, cult, the whole culture shock and the change. You know, what? It, was, it was completely different because mm -hmm. I moved there to live with my mom. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was, you know, my mom um, was a single parent then. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it was difficult. It was difficult because, first of all, I wasn't surrounded by like-minded people. people yeah. So for me to go to church with somebody, I couldn't even find the right church. I couldn't, at the end of 15, I couldn't just walk into a church mm -hmm. and say, that's the Pentecostal church I want to go to. Mm -hmm. So from when you were a teenager, when you moved here, did you, yeah. did, did you find that you were drifting towards, you know, um, you know worldly life? Absolutely. How was that struggle for you? Trying to, uh, you know, in trying for you trying to stay in church and you know, you know, you know what? When when I came to England, we were still going to church. We were going to um, a white garment church, and you know, it was still kind of, you know, it was still kind of. I was still kind of, you know, the fear of God was still there and that kind of thing. But it wasn't that the same passion, mm -hmm. the same teaching that I received uh, when I was back home was different teaching, and what was around me. Those times was like, you know what, you know, this is what is going on, you know. Mm -hmm. Even though I was going, I was, I was still going to church, but I wasn't the same. Mm -hmm. The same passion, the same relationship with God wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things was happening. I was, you know, I started desiring, you know, to want to go out with girls myself, you know, things that was already there. Mm -hmm. But through the word of God that was mm -hmm. in me, that was receiving, mm -hmm. and a good, you know, relationship with all the like-minded people, mm -hmm. I was in control. But then I was now in this place where everything was there in my face. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I'm sitting in the class, a girl is wearing a tight top, come and sit down on top of me. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did this all happen where I come from? Especially for a teenager as well. Hey, yeah. you know? Okay, so for me, so one time I was like, my mind started, you know, the way I started thinking started changing. You know, I started college and I met different friends as well. And then, I, you know, I, I thought, you know what? Hey, I don't want to work on them. make quick money. You know what I mean? So I started thinking, in a way that wasn't pleasing to God. Mm. And it's amazing just by hearing that you can see that God's hand has been, you know, working behind the scenes it, it, in your life throughout you exactly. know, your childhood. Yeah, so tell us about your calling when, so you made your way back in church. Yeah. You know, so um, how, when did God speak to you okay. about music and what you're doing now? You know, Absolutely. Um, explain that. To okay. you in, two th in 2002, well, in 2002, basically, I, you know, I, I was going through one of the things I did, you know, one of the things is I was going through like emotional mm -hmm. and break, should I, what, what should I say? Okay, relationship breakdown, yeah, yeah. with my girl, girlfriend, yeah, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my God, this is painful, you know what I mean? Anyone that, you know, does, you know, everyone that's gone through that pain, we know it's painful. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, this is painful, but Lord, I knew that throughout that process, God was separating me. Did you um, have any musical influence when you were growing up? Was there a family member that introduced you to music or um, you, you sort of picked it up yourself? You know what, I grew up, I grew up always listening to music. My dad and my dad, when we, wherever, the first thing we hear every morning is music. It's music, gospel music, every morning. So really, so every time I was going, I, I was feeling sad. Every time I was feeling alone, every time things were difficult as a child. You know, not being, you know, when you're the first son mm -hmm. and you're not the most brightest, yeah, that's oh, big the expectations. <laughs> that, you know, I was always the dullest in my family. I was the one that, you know, 
I was the one that was always, I was always the popular one. But yeah, when it when it comes to academic, you know, stuff, yeah, when it comes to school, I wasn't, you know, everybody in my in my in, in my house, you know, all my brothers and sisters, my siblings, yeah, they were always first second. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But you know, because they were always first second, I, you know, when I if I come home with ten, it's still not good enough. If I'm ten out of forty people in class. Mm -hmm. It's still not good enough, you know. So I was always that average person, 20 or whatever, you know. So it was kind of difficult. But my only way through was always just singing, wow. singing. I've always just loved singing, making up melodies. You know, it was amazing. Some of the songs, and we get to that. So everything that I've done, God has kind of developed me, you know. And I always love platform, every, every opportunity to sing somewhere. So you say a friend was doing something when I was young. I would like to, I, I, would, I would say, oh, can I sing a song? On the last album, the name was DTWG, uh, but on this new al album, it's Sam and DTWG. Tell us about that development. What has happened from then to now? Desire to Worship God mm -hmm. um, was a collective of group of people mm -hmm. with the same passion to worship God. Mm -hmm. And when we started in 2003, we started off as event group. Basically, we used to do a lot of event and promotion. Mm -hmm. and um, in 2000 and 2009, we decided that, you know what, we needed a face. Mm -hmm. Because with every group, there was always somebody, a people, that was always a face. Mm -hmm. And after we stopped doing the promotion, we, we still did promotion, but we started um, referring to ourselves as a music group as opposed to a promotion. If you understand know what I'm saying, we became mm -hmm. branded as a praise and worship group. Yeah, and this was to do with the exposure of that music with a new, uh, uh, a recent album and uh, the project when that came out. So everybody was like, wow. That was supposed to just be a project mm -hmm. because my passion was always music anyway. So when we, when I put the group of people together for the album, then we call it Desire to Worship God, the project. Mm -hmm. um, and after with the, you know, with the success and um, the doors that God opened through this album, mm -hmm. and you know, it was always a time where I was, as a person that was always in the background, mm -hmm that I knew, you know, for me really music, that music has always been that my passion. Mm -hmm. But I've always hide behind all the people mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, okay, I just have a group of people, and, you know, but God started ministering to me in 2009 that I was to come forward mm -hmm. and, you know, that was to come forward. But because of lack of confidence, because of lack of not, not believing in myself, it was lack of confidence mm -hmm. and you know, not feeling good enough, mm -hmm. you know, but finally a lot of things was happening when major members were like, you know, I had to release major members because they were that good that they had to go and mm -hmm. develop their own ministry as well. Mm -hmm. So it was always that time where I was going to come forward mm -hmm. as, as a front man mm -hmm. of DTWG. So hence the name Sam Adebanjo and DTWG is that to worship God. So tell us about the old album, um, Sam. Tell us how about how it did. I know you were nominated for a mobile award. I wow. went and voted for you. Wow, by the thank way. you. Tell us about that. What was that like um, for you? And what was the whole journey um, um, like for you as a group? You know what? The last album was um, an amazing project. You know, if you listen to the album, you hear the songs of basically my journey. Um, it's got songs like Holy Spirit Come, it's got songs like I Surrender. He has songs like um, Lord have mercy on a sinner like me. He has songs like trading. He has songs like Don't Worry, God Still Cares. He has song, songs like um, God has been so good. This is why I love you. These are all stuff that every journey part of my life um, I went through, like trading, coming back from where I was to a new person. Um, Lord have mercy on a sinner like me surrendering to God, I surrender, Holy Spirit. You know, the song had a lot of good recognition, you know, we had some major nominations, like Urban Music Award nomination, Mobile Award, we won the BEFTA Award uh, for Best Gospel, you know, and so all the nominations, you know, I can only give God glory for that, because God was showing me that, you know what, if you believe, those who trust in their God, you know, they will do exploits, you know, those who trust in God, you know, so we can, there's so many things, you know, that we can achieve when we trust God. You know, so this album was literally just a testimony of my life. DTWG, the project, you know, it did really well. Praise God. Yeah. Tell us about the new album. Tell us what went into the new album. We're going to have a listening session shortly. Um, tell us about how that came about. 
New album, what can I say, you know, um, it's been an interesting journey. The, the album is such a mission. The album on its own has been a mission. <laughs> you know, it's been a mission in terms of challenges that's come in my own life personally, um, challenges that has come with the members, um, not to say um, when you have a group, <laughs> anyone that have a group will know that it's hard to keep the same people focus on your vision. And so we've had people leaving, uh, many people have left, and we've had new people. Um, and a lot of time during this process, I've always, and I think that time when I put my own trust in men, um, we've had producers who run away with the money, and we've had people let us down. So many things have happened during this whole journey of this mission album. But one thing about this album, when I was praying to God, I said, God, what do you want this album to be? And the mission came up. And the mission is that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. When you hear the album, you know, the, 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 the Spirit of the Lord, which means that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, not just me, but anyone that goes out there and you want to profess God, you want to bring people to God. And that kind of thing. And it's also based on the book of Matthew that says, go into the world and preach the gospel. So when this music, when you're hearing this music in Nigeria, when you're hearing this music in Asia, you're hearing this music in the UK, whatever you're hearing, this music will deliver you from every everything that's holding you down. The stronghold will be removed. So this is this album is the one. And when I mean is the one, I mean it's powerful. It will change your life. It will change your life. And on this album, I worked with people like Kisha McFarland, um, Christina Maus, and we signed to Universal Deca, Deca Records, Andrew Bello, and Shabak uh, from Beautiful Sounds, um, so many other people. You know, it's it just it's just amazing divine connection. And of course, Osmo Collins, you know, which is like a spirit, is, is like a mentor to me, and you know. So for me, you know, God. Has showed himself so good with his presence.